This video is brought to you by Rockler, create with confidence. Check out the link down in the description below for all the Rockler tools used in this project. Hi, my name is Ben Pig from Wolby Design and I usually make things out of recycled skateboards inside this 20 foot shipping container workshop. But today, I have something special to show you. The Wolby Camera Jig. Okay, so I have been using a combination of this tripod and this Gorilla Pod to make these YouTube videos inside this workshop. But since my workshop is so small, I barely have enough space to set up this tripod and it just takes way too long to set up. Like I literally have to touch 10 different latches to open this thing. And there are many angles that I'm simply unable to capture. Get closer! So I designed one of my own. This is the Wobi camera jig. I wanted to be able to set it up without taking any of the footprint of the shop, be able to easily change the camera angles seamlessly, and be able to do crazy angles like this top-down shot. You can mount it on the wall, use pipe clamp, or make a custom base using some concrete and three-quarter inch black pipe. This jig really changed the way I shoot videos in this shop, and I'm hoping it will do the same for you. The design itself is easily customizable to fit your own needs. Need a longer reach? No problem, just add more arms. Need to use it as a desk? Sure, why not? I'm hoping this design is a good start for you and you can make changes according to your own needs. Special thanks to Andrew from AG Does It for helping me prepare this digital file. He made it extremely easy and foolproof to use these files and all you really have to do is print them. Make sure to check out his Instagram at AG Does It. Thanks, Andrew. This folder includes a PDF file for you to print and use them as a template, SVG file for CNC users, SketchUp file, and if you happen to have a shape vocal like I do, I even include a Carbide Create file as well as the G code for Carbide Motion. I understand everyone has different needs, and I love to see how you customize yours to fit your needs. So without further ado, let me show you how easy it is to make this. Here's what you need. You need a sheet of half inch Burtick Birch plywood. For CNC users, 12 by 30 inch would be perfect. Rockler sells this exact size. For non-CNC users, get the 12 by 60 inch from Rockler and you can use the leftover for a laptop base. You'll need 15 of these 5 16th inch hex bolts, two and a half inches long, 15 of these 5 16th inch hex nuts, 75 of these quarter inch washers. You'll also need one of these 5 16th inch T nut, one of these quarter inch hex bolts, one and a half inches long, one of these quarter inch hex nuts, and any ball head mount of your choice. I really like using this Joby ball head mount since it's interchangeable with my Gorilla Pod. As for mounting hardware, you have some options. You can mount it on the wall using a floor flange, two inch long pipe, 90 degree elbow, and a three quarter inch pipe of your choice. Make sure to find a stud, this needs to be super secure. If you prefer not to drill holes on the wall, you can buy one of these pipe clamps and clamp it on any tabletop. The heavier the table, the more sturdier the jig will be. And you can always make your own base using a paint bucket and some concrete. The key component is using this three quarter inch black pipe. You can get it how however long to fit your own needs. Now, the easiest way to cut this jig is using a CNC machine. On the SVG file, I wrote down exactly how deep you need to cut your circles. Personally, I like using the blue tape method, but you can always add tabs accordingly. The total cutting time takes little less than an hour. Mine looks a little bit more colorful since I decided to laminate some veneers using this vacuum pump from Rockler. I'll be diving more into detail about this vacuum pump, so stay tuned for my next video. And this is completely optional, but it's just one of the ways to level up your level up. Well, for the rest of you who don't have an access to a CNC machine, no worries, I got you covered. Go ahead and print the PDF file. First page is the material list and the rest will be used as a template. You can trace the parts onto the plywood to save on material, but it's a lot easier just sticking the paper onto the plywood, which means you need a half inch plywood that's 12 inches by 60 inches. Once you have all the papers glued up, cut out each page so it's easier to manage. 
It's a lot easier to drill all the holes first, and you just need two drill bits, 5 16 and a half inch. It would be nice to have a Forstner bit, but Brad Point bit will do. Now, it's extremely critical that you drill straight down. The more you're off, the harder it's going to be for you to assemble. Lucky for you, Rockler just came out with this beast of a portable drill guide. It's basically a portable mini drill press, but compared to the other models on the market, it's a lot more precise and it's a lot more sturdier. There are many features about this drill guide, but one of the best features is that it's portable so you can make your own jigs for bigger projects. You'll see me use this more in my future projects. Start by drilling the red holes first. This is where the hex bolt head will be wedged into to be secured. Set the dead stop to the same thickness as the bolt head. Make sure not to go deeper than the hex bolt head. You just need it deep enough to secure the bolt from spinning. Drill the teal circles all the way with the half inch drill bit and drill the rest of the holes using a 5 16 inch drill bit. Make sure to drill out the ones with the red circles as well. And obviously you can use a drill press if you have one. You don't think they know that? Once you have all the holes drilled out, you need to cut it. If you have zero cutting tools, the absolute cheapest tool you can buy to cut this would be the coping saw. It's great for cutting curves, it's fairly easy to use, and it's less than $10. And if you can splurge a little and get this Japanese pull saw, you're literally halfway there into learning how to cut dovetail joinery. A level up from this would be using a jigsaw. Since you're cutting plywood, try to get a fine tooth jigsaw blade for minimal tear out. And obviously, you can use a bandsaw if you have it. Okay, so once you finish cutting all the pieces out, for CNC users, you can get a little fancy by putting a round over on all these pieces and make it a little bit nicer and a little bit fancier. But if you don't have a router, you could go straight into doing everyone's favorite part of woodworking process, sanding. The cheapest way is, oh, I don't know, let's say you have a skateboard laying around, use the grip tape as a sandpaper. You just need to sand it enough so that you can hide any kind of mistakes or burn marks or any imperfections. The better the cuts are made, the less time will be spent on sanding. If you're looking for the highest quality sander on the market, check out Merca, specifically this Duros Orbital Sander. I'll leave a link down below. Once you're done sanding, put on a few coats of finish of your choice. I like using this satin spray lacquer since it dries super quick. After it's been cured, you're ready for assembly. To assemble this jig, you need a mallet or a hammer would work, but just make sure not to damage the wood accidentally. Starting with the base plate, insert 5 16 inch T-nut by hammering it into the inside of the plate. Next, insert 2 1⁄2 inch bolts in and flip it over. Place one washer for each bolt, and then add the second layer. Now it's extremely important that you put two washers for the middle. Depending on the type of plywood you used, you might even need three washers in the middle. Add the third layer and one washer in each bolt. Notice how these pieces fit loose so that you can make the exact adjustments needed to make this jig move up and down against the pipe. Add the last layer. You might need a little persuasion with a mallet or a hammer. Check the fit with the pipe and make sure it clears. Add a washer and just finger tighten the nuts for now. Flip it over and align the bolt head with the wood grain for minimal chip out. Prop up the base with scrap wood and hammer in the bolt head lightly. Continue all along to the other end. Make sure to insert washers in between each layer, just like you did for the base plate. 
you'll need to drill one more hole to finish it off. I like to drill at one inch away from the edge. This hole is for the camera and it's best to keep it at edge for any top down shots. Insert quarter inch hex bolt with the washer and tighten it with a washer and a hex nut. Make sure your ball head mount is able to do this top down shot positions. All you have to do is tightening all these nuts. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Start with the base first by tightening the four bolts surrounding the pipe. Continue all along and tighten the nuts accordingly. You'll know by feel. <laughs> and that's it! Make the final adjustment to your liking, and you'll need to make adjustments for a couple weeks due to wood expansion and contraction, but eventually you won't have to make any adjustments. Yep. This is it! So, this is it. Congratulations. You have officially leveled up. Now all you have to do is make your own and actually use it in your videos. This Wobi camera jig allows me to easily change position without any hassle, get certain angles that I wasn't able to reach with the tripod, and it's fully customizable. I would love to see how you customize yours, so check out my website at wobi.design to get your files today. If you ever consider creating content, this will be extremely helpful. Whether you're a chef showing off amazing cooking skills, or maybe you're doing product review videos, you can get very creative with this jig and level up your content creation game. And as I mentioned earlier, I do personally use this as a desk. My small 600 square feet apartment has absolutely zero space for a desk, so this jig has been extremely helpful. This jig is strong enough to handle 10 pounds and I had no problems using it as a desk. To turn yours into a desk, get a base plate just big enough to cover the laptop, drill a one inch hole to clear the camera mount, drill another 5 16 inch hole a couple inches away from the camera mount, and hammer in the bolt head lightly. Drill another 5 16 inch hole and secure it with a bolt and a wing nut. That's it. Now, ultimately, this jig was designed so that you could make it yourself as well as customize them according to your own needs. But realistically, not everybody has all the tools needed for this project. So, I made 11 of these special Wobi camera jigs available on my website, which is wobi.design. Special thanks to Rockler for supporting Wobi Design since the beginning. Check out the links down in the description below for all the Rockler tools used in this project. Thanks Rockler. So, thanks for watching, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. After you level up.